Welcome to Paranormal the New Normal. Today's episode, I am joined by a very special guest, and I never thought about doing a show on this topic, but you know what? Once I thought about it, it kind of intrigued me, so I like to learn things that intrigue me. So my guest today is Joshua Sanchez, the host of Your Spiritual Best Friend podcast, and kind of an expert in astrology. So we're going to talk today about astrology and how it affects mental health from children to adults even. So, Josh, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, Jeremy. It's Thank you for, for putting me on your podcast and stuff, and I'm really looking forward to having our great conversation and all that fun stuff. Same here, same here. So, I always like to start back at the beginning, kind of. What made you get into astrology? Yeah, so actually, Jeremy, it is actually a really cool uh, and really cool and funny story. So, pretty much, like, all my life, I, I've been in the sports and... I haven't really, I didn't really like focus in on like just spiritual stuff, mainly like I would just like work out and all that stuff too. But when I was an undergrad, I started to study psychology and I started to study how like the mind works and how certain like behaviors and how we act and how we operate and how we're raised affects us. So actually I was hanging out with a couple of my friends and uh, one of my friends were just talking about life because that's what you do when you sit and you, when you talk with your closest friends, the people you've been around with the most. And she just starts bringing up like, oh, like, have you ever heard of astrology? And I was like, uh, no, like, 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 what is that? And she pretty much like we did my chart and she was like, yeah, you're a tourist with this and this and this. And I was like, I was like, whoa, like, how are like, what is what does all this mean? So she explained it to me in a little bit in like grand, uh, like grand detail and stuff. And me, I was so curious about it. So I, I ended up staying. I'm not going to lie to you, Jeremy, like that night. I stayed up till probably like three, four in the morning, just researching, like, what is my sun? What is my moon? How does everything operate and stuff? And then all of a sudden I started learning more about my chart, listening to podcasts, uh, reading some books and all focusing on like astrology. And then also while I'm finishing my undergrad studying psychology topics and combining the two together. And it's like really cool. Um, so I, I, so that's pretty much how I got started. Shout out to one of my best friends, one of my day one friends that I really met and we've all gotten close. And and now and I've always realized this, Jeremy, like if you're really passionate about something like you just have that inner fire to just keep to, just to keep going and to learn more. So that's pretty much how I got into astrology and and all that fun stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something that I always I don't know. I mean, I always heard about astrology. I always knew people that were into it, but it's just something I never could click with. Cause I'm like, but <laughs> since I started this podcast, that's kind of changed. Cause I mean, yes, I haven't gotten into astrology yet, but I've been opening my world, my mind up to new worlds now starting this podcast. Cause I used to not believe in psychics and mediums either until I talked to a bunch of them on the show. So maybe, maybe I'll have to branch out more to do more episodes on astrology just to, and actually I think I have a few coming up anyway, but, just because it's one of those things that there are people, a lot of people out there who want to talk about it and who know about it. So, but everybody has different opinions on it. And that's the thing that matters. So, which I'm a Gemini, if that makes a difference. So I think they, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, because everybody seems to not know what I'm talking about. And I don't know if it's like a Mandela effect thing or something, but did they not change what your sign is like in the last couple of years? Like, didn't they change the dates for all the signs? Um, I know there was something going on where they added like a 13th zodiac sign. But for me, all I do is I stick to the traditional astrology. So like the 12 signs. And it's crazy to see how much like like how much astrology has evolved from traditional times to now. Like now they've added like so many more planets now. And it's definitely very interesting to see. But it's great, though. Astrology, I always like to view it as it's another tool in the toolbox to help understand ourselves. And uh, Jeremy, you're a Gemini, so uh, Gemini's are definitely really cool people. They they very they're they're ruled by Mercury, so Mercury is the planet of communication. So you're very big on like having that intellectual deep conversation. But obviously, like there's more, way more to it than just like the sign in which you were born. There's so many planets. There's aspects. There's so like there's houses. Like there's so much different stuff. So like that's why like when people say like oh astrology like if you go on like social media or if you go on the web it's like oh your your sun sign is this so you're supposed to operate this way you know but that's not necessarily true so that's why for me I don't really 
listen to all of like the meme accounts and stuff. Like some of it is pretty like accurate and stuff, but there's, like I said before, like there's just so much more to it than just your sun sign. Like there's just so much, so much more stuff. So um, once you get past that sun sign stuff, like, oh, like you're a Gemini. So you act, you operate this way. Oh, cause I'm a Taurus. Oh, I'm a Taurus. I'm supposed to be like lazy and stuff. I'm like, oh, I don't really resonate with that. So it's just like, yeah, I, I totally get that. Cause like you see all those memes on Facebook, like, oh, and I, I love the ones where it's like, Gemini, best in the bedroom. Okay, I agree with that one. But then I see the ones where it's like, Gemini, most volatile in relationships. Don't agree with that one. But <laughs> it's just yeah. like, it's like, I, yeah, those memes are a lot of times just, I think people just edit them and make them up to whatever they want to say or to make yeah. themselves look good. But. <laughs> Yeah, you know, all about that clickbait, Jeremy. That's what it is. It's just like, what am I? What am I going to do to stir that pot so that way I can really, you know, like get people to click on my meme or my picture or like view my profile? That's that's what all those accounts typically yeah. that's what their objective is. Well, gee, they're going the wrong direction because these oh, days, are, these days, all you got to do is talk about Will Smith. But <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's just I. So how do people figure out their other signs besides their sun signs? That's the because I am not sure about any other sign I would be besides that. So just for, oh, yeah. for, for, for the ignorant like me. <laughs> well, of, of course, Jeremy. So pretty much like how you find your sign, there's plenty of free websites. So it's totally free. Um, and that's why I like it. Because for me, I'm a college student. So, you know, I always try and find the best deals. I The cheaper, the better. <laughs> oh, God, um, yeah. But some, web, some websites that are free and easy to use, um, horoscope.co or yeah, horoscope.co is a great website for you guys if you want to fill out your birth charts. Um, also, AstroSeek. AstroSeek is a great platform. I recently found that, and I like that platform a little bit more. So what you do is you just Google astro-seek.com, click on that website, and then the only information you need to know is your birthday, time, time where you were born, and where you were born. And based off of that, uh, astroseek.com and it's a free website. They're not going to expose your info or anything like that. I've, I've done plenty of birth charts on there and nothing has been exposed. So I just want to put that out there as well. And uh, then you see like where the planets were aligned, where you were born. So, oh, for, okay. yeah. So, so for instance, like just, just starting out. So like, that's the website and the resources that I do. And then once you have your chart, you're going to see a lot of stuff. So it can be a little bit overwhelming at first, but you have a bunch of planets that are ruled by specific traits and stuff. And I can really get into that, Jeremy, if you're curious to know a little bit more when it comes to like what each planet means. But pretty much you, you get to see like the sign that is ruled under the planet. And then you also get a house number. So pretty much like you see all that. And once you just do some Google searches, like, oh, like, what does this mean? I have blank in this house or blank in this sign. And then there you go. So start off with AstroSeek, free platform. Put in your date of birth, birth time, and where you were born, and then there you go. Then you can see all the information. And like I said before, like astrology is another tool in the toolbox to help us understand ourselves. And because at the end of the day, like we're just trying to survive and and live in this world, you know. So it's like we got to find our passions and what, why, why do we operate the way that we operate? Like we really got to ask ourselves those questions, you know. So an astrology can help us with that. Yeah, I just actually texted my mom and I'm like, hey, what time was I born? Weird question. Because <laughs> I'd have to look at my birth certificate because I have no freaking idea what time I was born. I feel like it, I feel like it was early morning on Memorial Day, but I, I, I actually I know it was because my mom was pissed she was missing all the parties. But other than that, yeah, I, I yeah, I know where I was born, obviously, but time I was born, I actually couldn't tell you. That's weird. Like I never I never think about that. Like who most I assume most people don't know what time they're born off the top of their head. Oh, oh yeah, Jeremy. So my friends clown me so much because I'm I'm always the I'm always the one guy. I'm like, hey, like I'm like I'm like, do you know like when's your birthday? What time are you born? Because once you once you start getting into astrology, you start to like, like if you're really passionate about it. Like for me, like I learned about my chart, and I was like, man, I I need to learn my friends' charts. I need to learn this and and this and see if it makes sense. So I'm going around asking my friends. My friends are looking at me like, dude, like what the heck is what the heck's up with you, man? But uh, yeah, if you don't know your exact birth time, that's 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 OK. Um, there's a form of astrology where it's called sect. So in sect is uh, it's 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 to tell the difference if you have a, 
a day time, a day chart or a night chart. So if you don't know your birth time, like for instance, for you, Jeremy, you said like you were born in the early morning. So I would put in your chart. So let's say like early morning, let's guess like three to 6 a.m. around that range. You know, I can put that in AstroSeq and then your chart will be popped up and then we can see like if you have a daytime chart or a nighttime chart and pretty much how you find that is uh, house numbers one to six are all internal. So like it's below the horizon line. So let's say your sun sign was in the third house, you would have a night chart. If your sun was in house seven to 12 above the horizon line, then you would have a day chart. And pretty much like what sect is, is it breaks up the, the big seven planets into two teams. So you have night team and day team. And if you have a night chart, you resonate more towards your moon and other certain planets. If you have a day chart, you resonate more towards your, your sun sign than your moon sign and vice versa. And there's so much more to it, but that's just like a little, like just a quick little, like a quick little fastball when it comes to like, if you don't know your exact birth time, you can do like an estimate and then you can see if you have that daytime or nighttime chart. So. All right. Uh, but actually, I just thought of a question for that. Well, if you, is it, is it, is it some kind of a coincidence that maybe people who have daytime charts are morning people and people who have nighttime charts are night owls? Um, maybe there might be some stuff to that. I, I definitely have to do a little more research when it comes to that. But I also think that that actually could be the case because depending on what your sun sign is. So for you, for instance, Jeremy, like if you said you were born in the early morning, I'm just going to assume that you have like a, a daytime chart. So you'll resonate more with your Gemini energy than whatever like your moon sign energy is. And Geminis are very big on that intellect and they're very good at like putting themselves out there, you know, learning new information, not scared to ask questions, you know, and usually like and a lot of Geminis I know are pretty are either they're either night owls or they're morning. They're like morning people. So it's either it's either one or the other. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I was a night owl once upon a time when I was a young teenager. Now it's like I just want to go to bed. But <laughs> basically, so. So let's. Let's start with children. Like, how does astrology affect a child's mental health? Yeah, so so pretty much like when it when it comes to like there's certain parts and certain aspects of astrology that I really like that I can like we can like pick and like decipher. Like, for example, like when it comes to children, definitely how the child was raised and all that stuff, too, it, because we're all raised by our parents. Like it, they impact us in some ways, shape or form. Some parents, they impact us on more intense level. Some parents are just not really good parents, you know, and like you have to overcome that and stuff. So there's, there's a, uh, there's a specific house. It's the fourth house. Um, your fourth house, it rules like family life. Also your third house too involves, if you have a lot of siblings, like your siblings are also affected in the third house as well. So your third and fourth house usually involves around family in some short, in some way, shape or form. Um, so that's something that if I were to do and look at somebody's chart, I would look and see like, oh, you have a lot of planets in your fourth house. Now I would be like, OK, like how was like your family? How are you raised? You know, and um, just even to take it a little step further, um, our moon sign um, for depending on what astrologer that you follow or believe in, um, the moon sign has had ties to the mother figure. So like depending on what your moon sign is. Because the moon is the planet of like nurturing, caretaking, um, and all that stuff too. So depending on what moon sign you have could describe like your relationship with your mother or how your mother raised you when you were when you were little. I, I don't believe in that 100%, but I definitely think that there's some truth to it. Because if you really think about it, like we're, we're beings living in this universe, you know, and it's like the planets definitely affect us in some way, shape or form. So like I I've heard a lot of stories about that too, about how the, how your moon sign can also describe your relationship with your mother and then how, whatever your Saturn sign is, if you have aspects and aspects are pretty much how like each planet communicates to each other. So it's like your sun communicating to your moon, like, Hey man, what's up? What you doing? Like, the, cause the, you know how we <laughs> communicate, Jeremy, that the planets communicate too. Um, so like depending on what aspect you have in your Saturn, Saturn is the planet of like hard work, like not really like emotional. It's more about like 
getting stuff done, hard work, dedication, um, that describes your relationship with your father. And to share for me, I had, I had a, I had a square. So a square is like a challenge in, in my Saturn between like my son and Saturn and me and my dad have always had to put in work for us to have a stronger relationship. But that's just an example of how um, you can look at your moon and then also your Saturn to see relationships between mother figure, father figure, because those are the two, those are the two people that affect us the most in childhood. It's pretty much, you know, so like the majority, everyone does have like one caretaker, but just saying like the majority, you know, either the mother, father, we have some sort of relationship. So those are some things that I look at. So pretty much the moon sign for mother, Saturn and aspects for the father, and then the third and fourth house siblings and family and all that stuff too. So it's really cool. It's definitely interesting. Yeah, I definitely got to look into that because I did have interesting relationships with my mother and father as well. I mean, good ones, of course, but, well, not of course, because a lot of people don't, but just good ones overall, but definitely closer to my father. So I definitely, there'd be definitely be something with Saturn in that, I'm sure. But mm -hmm. so as, I mean, do our, do our astrological signs like ever change as we go through adolescence, puberty? Yeah, so, so there's three different types of astrology. So, like, that's why, I like, to tie it all the way back in the first question, you know, like, when, when people post memes and stuff, I really don't believe that because, like, like Jeremy, like, as you get older, like, there's, there's, uh, there's traditional astrology. So, there's natal chart, pretty much, like, when you were born, this was your chart. There's side real astrology. So, like, as you get older and as you experience things, certain parts and certain aspects of your chart change. And then, all, and then there's a whole other chart called your draconic chart. And that's pretty much like your soul chart. So like we all have, we are all souls that are put in like a physical body, you know? And when we feel our highest selves, that is our draconic chart. So to share mine a little bit. So for me, I have a lot of earth energy in my natal chart. So I, I'm a Taurus. I have a Capricorn moon. I have Taurus Mercury, just pretty much all earth. But then my soul chart, my draconic chart, I'm filled with fire energy. So it's like when I'm my highest self, I am like free spirited, having fun, you know, like asserting myself. So it's like, so those three charts to answer your question kind of show you how like as we get older, certain parts change. But for some people that don't believe in those two charts, there's um, there's transit astrology. So transit astrology is what's happening today. Because every planet is moving similar to how we're moving in our lifetime, you know, like, yeah. like we're learning new things, we're experiencing new things. Like, for instance, there's a thing called the Saturn returns. Um, so what happens is Saturn, it takes Saturn 28 years to go through all the zodiac signs, all 12. Right. So what happens is when we're born Saturn. So, for instance, for me, my Saturn is in Aries. So. When I'm around 28 years old, Saturn is going to return back to Aries. And that is a period where we experience a lot of just, if we haven't put in, like I said, Saturn is the planet of hard work. If we haven't put in the work that Saturn wants us to do when we were born, we're really going to feel it during this time period. So if you think, Jeremy, like around 28, 30 years old, think about some things that have happened in your lifetime that was just like, what the heck? Or like, what the heck? Like a lot of stuff that's just beyond the horizon. So there's so much to answer your question because I, I kind of, I podcast a lot so I can go on many different avenues. So there's different types of astrology. There's side real and draconic, but then there's also transit astrology. So it shows you like what's going on today. And if you just want to start with, with anything, um, you literally just follow the moon. The, foon, the moon is one of the coolest planets to look at every single day because it's constantly changing. So the moon goes through each zodiac sign every two and a half days. So it was just in Sagittarius over the weekend. Now it's in Capricorn. So like even to even to simplify it a little bit, like certain days you might have more, you might you might you might feel more emotional certain days. Some days you might feel like I'm ready to take on the world. The moon is in constant is in constant orbit and why and and this is something that's been going on forever why does everybody say like you know like when the full moon happens craziness happens 
Well, a full moon is going to happen, Jeremy, because I have it on my calendar. I'm looking at it right now. Um, literally in two more days, I, this either because today's Tuesday. Yeah. So either Wednesday night or Thursday night, depending on where you live, it's going to be a full moon in Aquarius. So like there's a full moon and the moon has their own uh, their own like phases. So to just start off following the moon is a really cool way to practice like that transit astrology, like what's happening currently, like every single day in day to day life. So to answer your question, like those are the three things that to look at as you get older, certain parts of your chart change, you might be experiencing like, like transits and like certain planets where you might feel it more. There are some planets that we all feel as a collective because it takes forever for uh, like, like, for instance, Pluto. Pluto takes, Jeremy, 200 and like 80 something years to go through all 12. So Pluto is only going to change like once or twice in our lifetime. <laughs> but that's that's just an example. Um, but yeah. Which did Pluto being downgraded from being a planet affect astrology at all or? Um, uh, no, not really. It all depends on who you ask. Like for me, I'm very I'm big on like the traditional, but I also add a lot of modern astrology into it too um but yeah pluto did not really change but people like people be surprised pluto actually is a very intense planet because it's the planet of rebirth transformation scorpio rules pluto so if you ever met like a scorpio scorpios are really cool but they're also very uh they're very intense people like i have a lot of best friends that are scorpios that's why i can testify but they're very intense like they're really cool to be around, but you have to understand their energy and they're very big on transformation, rebirth, like restarting, re getting their life together, you know? So that's what Pluto does to all of us though. It's the planet of transformation, rebirth. So for some people, depending on where your Pluto is, you might feel like you're, you're constantly trying to like rechange and rediscover yourself constantly. Um, that's just an example. Yeah, Pluto must be far away on mine then, because I, <laughs> I've been, I've been, I've been the same person forever, and I don't try, I don't do that much changing. So, <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, it's just the way it goes. But I, yeah, I don't, I don't change. <laughs> I've always been the same person, and that's the scary part to a lot of people. But yeah. so, yeah, I mean, going back to the full moon thing, that actually is a, I mean, the full moon's a huge thing. I know in astrology, it's a f huge thing in the paranormal supernatural world as well. Because I mean back to the word I hate werewolves because dogmen exist, but they became werewolves in medieval times because they started thinking, Oh, the full moon, they only, they only attack went to full moon. So, okay. Maybe those creatures just react when they see a full moon. Cause it sparks something in their brain or something like that. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm pretty sure certain plants only bloom during the full moon. Right. Yeah. Something like that. It, it's just, it's crazy to see like just how much the moon impacts and like you hear like all the stories like that's why i think astrology is just so cool like a lot of people don't some people get uncomfortable talking about it but it's like if you really think about it like the the whole discovery of like the full moon and even like the werewolf example like how was that created you know what i mean like like somebody definitely was thinking about the moon's impact you know and we all we because we're we're all human beings you know we're, we're beings filled with energy and it's like we live in this universe and the planets definitely have some effect on us some way. It, you might not well, fully 100 percent believe that, you know, depending on like what, how you're raised and stuff. But there definitely is some we definitely feel some sort of energy from the planets. We have to. Yeah, I just keep thinking of that one Rocco's Modern Life episode where it was all about the plants lining up for something to happen. <laughs> I, I forget what the end goal was, but. I just never seen the animation of the plants lining up perfectly. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> I, I forget what the hell the storyline was, but I just never that one episode. And it's like, that's all I could think about right now for some reason. But <laughs> so, but is there a way to combat when, when people feel like astrology is the reason that their mental health is a little bit off balance at that moment? Is there a reason, is there a way to combat that with crystals or anything like similar? Yeah. So, so my answer to your question is going to be, it all depends on the type of person you are. Like with, when it comes to astrology, like when it comes to aspects or like, we all have challenges in our chart. Like we all have things that we, we just naturally have the ability to do. And we also have things where we really need to work on ourselves. So there's plenty of resources that I recommend. Um, for my podcast, I've interviewed some like crystal healers, 
Um, I'm not really a big expert in terms of like crystal healers, but I know that certain crystals and gems have certain meanings. And depending on like what gem that you have, like you might feel it, 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 it's all meant to like boost your confidence, you know, and really like help you just regain yourself because we go through so much stuff in life, Jeremy, you know, like it all depends on what we experience. You know, it could be a bad relationship. It can be, it can be like a loss of a job or like losing your passion in your career and trying to restart and restart over. So during those times, you know, it's just like, we really just need to really regain ourselves and how to do that. Some people it's for crystals. For me, I love to journal um, every, so for, for instance, sticking with the moon a little bit. So every new moon, so every two weeks, there's a full moon and there's a new moon. So I believe the new moon was in, I believe, I forget which one, it, I think it was in Leo in the beginning of this month. And every new moon is like a good way for you guys. If you guys want to like manifest like positivity. So like for me, like every new moon, I sit and I journal, like, what are some goals that I have for this month? What are some things that I want to do? to for myself in this month and then by the end of the month you know like i manifested i spoke it into the universe and let's put that plan into action you know so it all depends on the type of person you are like some people they love to write that's how they heal like that's why i love astrology because it helps understand like our own like spirituality so for some people like for some of my friends they do like reiki meditation um for other people for me like i love to do journaling and i love to like listen to like just calm music and and I do meditate from time to time, but it all depends. And I just think we just need to be aware of all the resources that are there. Um, some people that I've, I've heard about this like a couple of weeks ago, like tapping, it's called EFT. Like we have certain traumas in our body where um, depending on like how we process it and stuff, like there's people that, that run classes where they can play like certain tunes and, we tap our bodies, our physical bodies, and it's just releasing the trauma that's been blocked in. Um, I interviewed another person that does human design. Like there's just so much like resources and there's so many people that are willing to help. We just need to be aware of that. So to answer your question, uh, Jeremy, it's pretty much just finding the resources and it's a journey. It's, it's easier said than done, you know, like highs and lows. And um, it really is just finding the resources that, that you need for yourself um, in order, in order to grow. Now I do know, like, I don't know off the top of my head, but I know there's definitely some websites that are there to really help us and all that stuff too. But that's why I really like to combine that mental health aspect in with astrology as well. Um, but yeah, I don't know if that answered your question perfectly, but, <laughs> but that's pretty much what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, it answered my question to some degree. I mean, everybody has different ways of healing. I mean, I personally like a good bowl of weed to help heal when I'm having a rough day, but <laughs> or a nice drink. But I had surgery, so I can't do that. But I actually, I actually was just in the process of going to Astro Steak to see what my chart is because I'm so <laughs> curious. I am so freaking curious. But yeah, it's that it's that Gemini energy, Jeremy. You want to know that new information? <laughs> well, I mean that's very true because I also, I mean, well, I don't know if you fall in line with this or believe this, but do you believe there's a spiritual awakening going on in the world in the last five years or so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, I do. I do because, and also to take it a step further, um, I forget. I should know this, but there's a there's a specific planet that is about to go in retrograde. It goes into retrograde or it changes signs every eight years, and it's uh it's Uranus. That's what it is, and Uranus is the planet of freedom, um, like change. It's like a, it's an exterior planet that's all about that. And it's changing from Aries to Taurus. So Taurus is more of like a calm, like healing energy. Aries is more about physical action. So lately for the past eight years, we've all, it's been like a, it's been like a kind of like just all over the place energy when it comes to like physical action and all that stuff. And now it's shifting to Taurus and Taurus is more about stability, um, chillness. Like because Taurus is ruled by Venus. So that is something that is actually going to change at the end of this month. So that like to answer your question, like there definitely is going to be a big shift if there hasn't already been one already. And I def I agree with you. There's been a big shift. The pandemic was a huge, huge awakening moment for everybody. And now we're starting to hit another big shift because Uranus is changing. And if you think about it, if you live in the United States, if you're listening from the United States or wherever, 
the midterm elections are going to take place in a couple months as well. So it's like Uranus is changing and now you have the midterm elections and all this stuff too. So it's definitely interesting to see how the planet sometimes can, can also be a little bit of an explanation as to like, yeah, I definitely feel like this huge universal shift. Yeah. Which I've had a lot of psychics tell me the same thing. And it's weird because I never considered myself sensitive person in my life, but mm -hmm. Since then, it's kind of like, I don't know, because it seems to me like things are changing around the horizon, kind of like, because I talk to these mediums, and all of a sudden, I can, I can feel like things opening up myself, like I get feelings in the middle of my brain when I talk to them, and it's just the way it is. Like, I was talking to one, and right here in the middle of my brain, I get like this light feeling, and... I have like cold sweat running down my back. And when I got done talking to her off camera, I told her, I'm like, yeah, I got this strange feeling talking to you. And she's like, she's like, you know, there's a spirit right next to you, right? And I'm like, where? I don't see anything. But, and, and according to her, it ended up being my grandfather, deceased, yeah. obviously. But so it was just weird. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I'm just, it's experiencing new things. And like, I actually think I am having a spiritual awakening myself of some kind by doing this show. Like, it just, and I was talking to a Christian miss, a Christian missionary the other day, and she, all of a sudden, I started having this circle of light, like, around my eyes, and I'm stone cold sober when I'm talking to her, and I don't know what the hell, like, is going on. Like, I, I told her on camera, too, like, yeah, I'm seeing, like, the circle of light when I talk to you, and she's like, she's like, I, I mean, she's per she said, I think that's God trying to talk to you, but I'm like, as an agnostic, I can't exactly acknowledge that, but okay. But <laughs> I'm like, it's something. I could believe it's something trying to talk to me, but which actually, I I just messaged you my chart just because I'm dying to hear what it says. Okay. Because okay. I'm 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 looking at it and I'm trying to like read it. I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> like I, I'm expecting like plant. I'm expecting like plant names. I'm like, okay, I don't reckon. I, oh, actually, okay, well. <laughs> I recognize yeah. it as different astrological symbols, but. Oh, there was a chart. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want, do you have my email, right? I actually sent you a messenger because I, I, okay, I followed your Facebook link uh, before we got on because I was trying to see if you're hopping on. Oh, I got you. Yeah, just let me pull up my Facebook real quick, and I got you. Yeah. Um, and and I'm down. And if you want to do a live chart reading, I'm, I, I can, I'm definitely interested in that. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. Might, might get some people coming your way too, so it works. Of course, this, yeah. This, yeah, this actually works because of uh. I'm actually uh, interested in, uh, and I, I, I'm having more of like a spiritual calling to start doing astrology chart readings. I definitely think that would be really cool. Um, but just to share, uh, so it, I know you sent me like the chart and stuff. There's also, if you scroll down, like there's going to be like certain signs and stuff. Uh, I'm trying to, trying to see, yeah, because. Oh, the, ho the houses you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because the houses also will tell you, the houses will tell you where. So pretty much when you see your chart, so like, like I said in the beginning, like it's very, it's very intimidating first. Um, but before I explain, I, I, you mentioned something about, I really think, but before I, before I forget this, cause with me, like I have to say it before I forget it again, you would really be interested in tarot readings, Jeremy. Like I, I really, I've talked to some tarot readers and I actually have one coming on later this month. Who's going to do yeah. a tarot reading live. Yeah. I, I really think you would really like that because what happens is like when people do a tarot reading, um, and is to tell if somebody's good and somebody's not good because the people that I really do, like they don't really focus on like future stuff. It's more about, it's really important about what question you ask, but what happens is like, they feel like your ancestors and their energy. Um, so maybe when you're talking to your psychic, like your, your grandfather was probably looking out for you. Like, Hey, Jeremy, like, cause like our ancestors are trying to send us messages, you know, and, and, th and tarot readings have really helped me. Um, cause I, I've dealt with some, a lot of like family trauma and stuff. And I've gone, to, uh, cause a couple of my best fr friends, like they don't do it on a professional level, but they're very big in tarot readings and that those tarot readings really helped me. It was like going to see a therapist, honestly, like they were like, yeah, like my ancestors, I, I felt their energy as well because similar to you, like, like my grandpa died when I was in second grade. Um, and I have a couple of my, my close relatives that have passed away over the years cause that's what happens. But yeah, you would really like tarot readings just just to just to share. Like you would really, I ten out of ten would recommend that for you because I really think you that would be a really good awakening moment 
as well to continue to all because I already know you you already had a spiritual awakening moment, but that'll just continue. Um, oh, it, I, I'm hoping it will, and I I, I mean I'm. I'm I'm also. I've also been interested in because I I have someone come to my show who will do them. It's actually the same person who's doing the tarot reading, but she won't do it on my show because it's too much effort and she doesn't want to be on camera while she does it. Obviously, mm -hmm. but okay. pa past life, past life readings. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. I I, I tend to, I that's very interesting. I, that stuff is always as I've gotten older, like all that stuff has really been fascinating. I've been really fascinated because I I grew up old school Catholic traditional like no disrespect like I, I i there's some things that i still follow when it comes to that like there's certain phase like there's certain like quotes in the bible that i still follow like the ten commandments are very important like i got my communion and everything but as i've gotten older like i've studied more about astrology i've i've started to like tap into that more you know and then because there's so many there's so much stuff that we can really learn like spirituality is so cool um but when it comes to like houses and stuff let me know when you see that um, yeah, um, well, it's, it says the first house is ascendant. Yes, yes. So your first house is so pretty much your, yeah, your ascendant. So it's either ascended or rising. My fault. I, sh I should probably explain. So, so your, so your rising is, it's a very important part of your chart because it's the mass that you present to others. So it's pretty much like, let's say you first meet somebody like me and you, like we're just meeting right now. We're each putting on like our rising signs are showing right now because we're just meeting each other. So our rising sign is like first impressions. It's like the cover of the book. Some people, have you ever met somebody and they're just like, man, like they can, like, they just, they, they tell me their whole life story already. And it's like, what the heck? Well, for some people, they're more quiet and reserved. So that's what the ascendant rising is in our chart. So it's, it's the first house. So pretty much when you were born, this was the energy like obviously like you have your sun sign, but this is like the energy in the horizon where you were, where you were born, like either in the nighttime, this was the lunar energy, solar for the daytime, you know, and it's also like the sign that we want to emulate. We want to become. So for you, I'm looking, what does it say for your ascendant? I believe it says cancer, right? Or yes. Uh, ascendant cancer. The ruler of the, is the moon. And it says in Libra in the fourth house. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So pretty much like when it comes to your rising being in cancer, that's like how you, how you present yourself to people. So cancers are very, they're very like nurturing. They're very good caretakers. But when it comes to like, like, the, cause the cancer is like the crab. So crabs, like they have like a hard shell in the inside, but what's it, what's actually inside of a crab, like besides the hard shell a crabs are actually very soft inside. So that's pretty much how you present yourself to people. So very like chill, like very like a good caretaker, nurturing, you know. But then when it comes to your emotions, you hide it all in because you don't want people to like know that like you're, you know what I mean? Like very like, like, like emotional, you know, you keep it all in. But then when they actually get to know you, you they start to understand and, and understand. If you get what I'm saying. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. It makes sense actually to who I am because I am type person that'll go to someone and they'll know my life story within like five minutes. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and like I said on Astro Seek, like cancer, it's ruled by the moon. So each planet is ruled by a sign, and that'll really help you understand like like the zodiac signs in general. So so if cancer is ruled by the moon, so the moon, like I described a little bit earlier, like the moon is a very it's a very caretaking energy. So these guys have a really good sense of home. They have a they want to have a really good sense of family because it's all about caretaking. Where cancers always run into problems, and if anybody listening to this has cancer in any form of your chart, who you surround yourself with is so important because you have like this energy to caretake, you know. And if you choose the wrong person that you're caretaking to, what's gonna end up, what's gonna end up happening? You're gonna end up getting taken advantage of. So it's like, so it's Whoa. like, yeah. That happened to me so much in my teenage and twenties. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that makes that makes so much sense. <laughs> but yeah, so that's just an example of the the moon energy, and it's not a bad thing. Like I said, like we all have. There's positives with that, and there's negatives. So like, cancers are very good at understanding emotions. They're very emotionally in tune. So even though you're a Gemini sun, 
your rising is in cancer. So that's something that you want to strive towards. So you want to strive towards understanding people's emotions, where they come from, you know, being a really good caretaker for the people that you love and care about. Like that's what you want to present to people um, to share mine, just to share mine. So that way it's, you know I mean? So that way we're, we're both understanding my risings in Sag. So it's a fire energy. It's Sagittarius is like the philosopher. So they very free spirited. So for me, that's what I want to present to people. So I know I shared how I have all earth in my chart, but my rising is in fire. So it's all like, so it's like the mass that I want to present to people is like, I want to explain to people like, yeah, like I know a lot of information. I want to teach this information and I want, and I'm very free spirited. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. So it's like, that is how our two risings are happening in this conversation. So that's why I say like your rising sign, your ascendant is, in fact, I, in some cases, I think it's more important than your sun sign. Um, but yeah, that's a whole other uh, debate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I could see that actually kind of, cause it makes sense so far. Yeah. So is the ruler of the ascendant moon always Libra or is that just at the time I was born? Yeah. So that was when you were born. So the natural ruler of the moon is cancer, but for you, so your moon sign is in Libra. So when you were born, the moon was in Libra. So pretty much, and the moon and the moon is how we process things emotionally. It's our caretaking ability, unconscious mind. And for you, yours is in Libra. So Libras are the balance scale of the Zodiac sign. So what they want is they want peace and they want harmony. But the thing is having a Libra in your moon, you, you can't have that peace and harmony alone. You need to have like a partnership or like have like your relationships, like you really have to have a good balance in your relationships. It's give and take, because again, like I said, the Libra is the balance scale. So it's like, you can't have, you can't balance work and all this stuff too, but if you don't have the relationship, you know, so it's like, you want all of these things to have a good balance, good harmony. Libras hate to be embarrassed in public too. So I don't know if that resonates with you, but like being embarrassed in public or being embarrassed is something where it's like, no, you don't do that to a Libra. Libras also are very social too. Um, they're ruled by Venus. So Venus is the planet of love and senses and art. So like having a Libra moon, like you want to, it's like that harmony aspect. Like I said, like you want to have that perfect harmony. Which actually that does relate though, because I've been having some arguments with the wife lately about trying to balance my podcast and rest of mm -hmm. my life. So. Yeah, yeah, you just want that balance. I mean, we all want balance, but Libras take it to another level. Because if you if you literally, Jeremy, after this podcast, if you Google the image of Libra, it it's it's a balance scale. It's yeah, like it's literally, that's very good negotiators go, very good like mediators. So like, I don't know for you, like if you ever been like, let's say there's an argument between a couple close friends, are usually the one that's like a good mediator where it's like, I see where you're coming from, I see where you're coming from, like let's work this out or are you so like, cause that all depends on where the planet is in our chart too. But that's just an example. I mean, sometimes depends on the <laughs> friends. And if I, if yeah. I know there's going to argue regardless, I'll just walk away, but <laughs> yeah, yep. don't want to be embarrassed. See, there you go. <laughs> but, and then the last thing such for that one is the ruler of the ascendant moon is in the fourth house. Yes. Yeah, so that means that your moon sign is in the fourth house. So your fourth house involves, like family. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. So it's all about like family, security, um, all that stuff too. So for you, for, for you, like Libra at that Libra energy is in the fourth house. So it's like that balance aspect when it comes to like family life is something that's very important for you having like that balance and that harmony. Um, I can get into more details if I, if I like see a little bit more because there's other planets, like there might be other planets in your fourth house, but that's just a quick little summary. Like the fourth house is about like family um, and all, all that fun stuff too. So, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, I look at that chart and I'm like, yeah, I don't see what the hell else. I don't see what it really means, but yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah. If you scroll down, uh, I'm trying to see here. Cause I, I'll pull up Astro seek real quick. Um, because I, uh, yeah, cause there's, cause there's also um, the house system that I use is uh is whole sign. Um, I, I'll explain that pretty much. So whole sign house system, because the, the modern terminology for the housing system is Placidus. 
Placidus is good if you're just starting out, but for me, I'm more into the traditional. So I do whole sign, which is every 30 degrees. Uh, each okay. sign has 30 degrees evenly. So like per- certain things change. So if you go on your chart, let's see. So first you put in your information. So you put in date of birth, all that fun stuff. Um, let's see here. So I'm just pulling up mine to see if I can help you like, uh, like get it. Uh, I'll, so that way we're on the same page. We're like what you're seeing and I'm seeing. So that way it's not like, yeah. One second, Delaware. I was born in uh, Wilmington, Delaware. <laughs> yeah, New York here. but No, I got you. I got you. All right, let's see here. So, yeah, so you see your chart um, to your right. So, like, you know, you know how you see, like, a big symbol and it shows, like, all of this, like, information? To your, to your right, it should say, like, planet positions or it should say. Positions, um, yeah. Yeah, and then it, then do you see like do you see like sun, and then you see a symbol, and then you see a number, or if you don't see a number, like uh, did you put your birth time in? Just like I, I put um, eight o'clock in the morning because I think that's okay. around when I was born. Okay, yeah. So like, if you go to the right, so you see like this big image, and then you go, it's a, it's, it should be to the right, and it says like sun, and then it gives you like a sign and like degrees, and then it gives you like a number. And uh, yeah, so it said it's planet position. So if you don't see that, um, there's a tab called, let's see here. You can go birth chart again. I'm just trying to see. So that way, because that way we can see like what planet is in each house. And then that's when I can give you like a way better. Um, if you hit, try and hit custom graphics. And then C- let's see. C- custom graphics. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you know how you see, like, on your link, there's, like, birth time, universal time, and then there's, like, tabs. So there's birth chart, there's custom graphics, shape, aspect tables, positions, dominance. Yeah, I, I see. Yeah, I see. I see shape, aspects. Oh, you mean custom layout? Um. Yeah, I, yeah. it might be either custom layout or custom graphics just to see. Yeah, I, I got custom layout open now. Okay. All right. So if you scroll down, is it, you should see, like, a tab that says house system. It's, it should be to the left. Yeah, it's, yeah, it says Placidius or Placidus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's Placidus. So that's the that's the for it. so if you guys are just starting, stick with Placidus until you get a better feel. So like that's how you can change like the house system. So what I use is you can either hit the down arrow and then hit whole sign. But if you want to use Placidus for this, then I'm I'm cool with that. Do Do you use whole sign with the H one to H seven horizontal or just the regular one? Oh, so I just use the regular one. So I just use whole sign. And then what you do is then you hit redraw. Yep. And then you tap on that. And then let's see, because now you see your chart. And then to the right, I don't know if you see like planet positions. Um, yeah, positions. So then there should be something that call, that says like detail. So if you go to the right and then it says planet positions and there should be like a little like blue thing that says detail. And then if you tap on that, um, that's when it'll take you to um, planets and it'll say sun, moon, Mercury, Venus. And then that's where you can see everything. Oh, um, okay. And then the house that it's in. Um, I, it gave, it, oh, yeah, it gave me a list of planets and a list of houses and what degree and what house the planets are in. Yep, there you go. <laughs> so, so what does it say for you? So let's do, so each planet has a different meaning. So just to share a little, just, just like brief summary. So your sun sign is that's like your ego, your identity, like it's the sun. So like we all need to have an ego in this lifetime. You know, some people, their ego is presented more, some they're not. And the and the sign that is ruled under the sun or like the, the sign that feels most comfortable in the sun is Leo. So if you have a Leo sun, think, like if you ever hung out with a Leo, Leos are always like big energies, you know, like very oh, like me. The lion. Yeah. The lion. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Leo the lion, yep. And what is a lion? The king of the jungle. So if you ever met a Leo, since they're ruled by the sun, and if you have any Leo placements, you're going to attract people because Leo energy is very like royalty, very like vibrant energy to be around. So that's your sun. So like now, depending on what your sign is. So for instance, for me, my sun sign is in Taurus. So Tauruses are very, so my ego is very sense of like, like groundness, like, 
physical work, really just like chilling, good vibes, earth energy. Um, but that's like sun sign a little bit. So then there's the moon. The moon is your emotions, like we described. Mercury is the planet of communication. So for you, Jeremy, your your sun sign is Gemini. So Mercury is the planet that rules Gemini and also okay. rules Virgo. So if you have Gemini energy, Mercury is the planet of is it's the messenger of the planet. So one day Mercury might be around the sun sign. One day Mercury's chilling in Saturn. Mercury is the messenger. So Mercury goes everywhere. Um, just to take it a step further, you know how I mentioned sect earlier in our conversation. Um, Mercury is is it doesn't matter what team Mercury is on both teams. Mercury will be if you have a night chart, Mercury is going to be up there in the nighttime. If you have a daytime chart. Mercury is going to be chilling with the sun and all that stuff. Mercury picks a team because that's what Mercury does. And that explains why Gemini's like they want to know as much information as possible. Virgos are like that too, but Virgos are into the details more. If you ever met a Virgo, they're really good teachers. All the Virgos I know have a really like caretaking energy about them. And they really focus on like so many specific details where it's like, I'm like, dang, like, are you okay? Like they're, they're very perfectionist. Um, that's, that's how Mercury, that's how Mercury works. Like Mercury is the messenger of the planets. So, so sounds, like, instance, sounds like, sounds like my brother, that one, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he might be a Virgo. So who knows? Um, yeah. or he might have Mergo in, in, in certain parts, but what, so here's a cool little, here's a good, here's a cool little tip though. You can find someone's Mercury. You can guess someone's Mercury without even looking at their chart. So Mercury the, the, the find someone's Mercury. So first you find their sun sign, right? So for you, for instance, your, Mer your, your sun is in Gemini. So your Mercury can be three of the following. Your Mercury can either be Gemini, Taurus, or Cancer. It's Gemini according to my chart, but yeah, see, yeah. So Mercury, it, it, it's either, it's one placement or the same sign. So Mer you know how I said Mercury, picks a team. So if you, for instance, for you, you have a daytime chart. So Mercury is going to be very close. So for you, like your, what house is your son in? Both my Mercury and sun are in house 12. Yep. Yep. So, so house 12. So your, your 12th house is like the house of like, like the supernatural. It's like things that are beyond like spirit, like it's things that are beyond like our, like understanding, like, like our five senses, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like for you, like you have your sun sign there and you have your Mercury there. So it must, and again, like Gemini having Mer Mercury, like be like your, like your ruler, you know, that need for learning information about like the supernatural in this podcast, it definitely, definitely, I could definitely see it correlate a little bit. It makes, it makes, it makes sense. And it's cool. And I, I don't know, I don't know if it makes difference, but my <laughs> Chiron or Chiron yeah, Chiron. Is, is, is in the exact same place, Gemini 12. Yeah. So your Chiron. So this is one of the planets that um, it's really cool. So a, a little uh, just a quick story, because I if I just talk about Chiron, we could talk for a whole other hour. But Chiron was the wounded healer in mythology and in, in Greek old school mythology. Chiron was immortal. Was um, he Hercules' mentor? Um, he was Hercules' son. And what happened was Apollo adopted him. So imagine being the son of Hercules. And then Apollo is your adopted father <laughs> and you're immortal. So pretty much. But the thing is with Chiron, Chiron, Chiron wants us to heal. Chiron is a helper. He's a teacher. So what happened was Chiron was a teacher helping all of his, all of the students, you know, I forget what, I forget what student he taught. He shoots like arrows and stuff. I don't know, like exactly like the type of person. It's not coming off the top of my head. He's a, I mean, Chiron's a centaur, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken in mythology yeah I, I i believe so but yeah don't quote me 100 percent. but pretty much like chiron is he's called the wounded healer so yeah. what happened what happened is he got struck by a poisonous dart and he's immortal so he constantly feels this pain of poison right so he either has the choice of so what happened was someone got hurt like in the other planets or like the other like the like uh, all the like one of the leaders got hurt and he either had he had a choice he can either lose his immortality and take endless suffering um, because one of the guys, uh, he was like an endless sufferer. I, I don't know exactly who it is, but yes, he can either take, because he got hit by the poison dart. He can either yeah. live his life 
with poison for the rest of his life, or he can, or he can lose his immortality and be stuck in doing like the endless, like just the endless like loop. And he chose that. So pretty much long story short, Chiron is the wounded healer. So we all have wounds in our charts that we need to work on. But Chiron is meant because Chiron was a good was a good person. Like this person was a teacher before all this crazy stuff happened to him. Like he really was a really great teacher. So he what what that means is we're meant to learn about our core wound. Once we're able to learn and embrace our core wound, then we're able to grow and take the next step and become even a, even better. So for you, yours is in Gemini, which is in your twelfth house. So you have a lot of that a lot of energy that is hard to understand. It's like stuff that's beyond our five senses because what happens is, you know how we, you know how I mentioned the first house when you're born, that is when our, that's when our soul meets our physical body. The 12th house is everything that our soul has pushed off and not experienced that we are going to feel moments in our lifetime during the, in this lifetime. You get, if you get what I'm saying, because the 12th house is the last house of all 12. And the first house is the beginning. So the 12th house is the end. The first house is the beginning. So for you, it's a, it's a lot of, it's that Gemini energy that is in that 12th house, which is the house that is beyond like the, like the, our five senses. It's, it's sort of, it's hard to really understand. So like, it's more about just like these feelings that you have that is, that is not, you can't explain it, you know? Yeah. I, yeah, I see what you're saying there. Mm-hmm. Huh? Yeah, it's, it's it's very interesting. I this stuff has always been really cool, and that's and thank you for being open with sharing because this stuff is very uh, this stuff can get uh, you know, it's a lot. You know, it's it's a lot of. It's a lot well, I of figure, and, I mean, I figure the way I would ex I would understand it the most is if I put it on my own life to kind of yeah yeah wrap it around my head around it all. You know. Yep. I mean, that's yeah. just the way I see it. Yeah. What and, the hell is the, oh, cancer. Duh. I'm <laughs> looking at I'm looking at a CAN. I'm like. What the hell science that I'm like, oh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, so yeah, so pretty much like once you learn a little bit more about your chart, how to learn each of your charts. So there's four things. So there's planets, signs. So each planet is has certain traits, each sign has certain traits, right? And then the house number tells you where the planets and the signs are going. So the planets tell us what is happening. The 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 sign tells us how it's happening. And then the house number tells you where it's happening. So it's like, oh, you have Chiron in your 12th house. Like for you, for instance, for me, I have it in, I also have Chiron in my 12th house, but for me, my energy is in Scorpio. So for me, Scorp and, and, the, and how to understand Chiron is you look at the sign that it's in Chiron is meant to be a challenge in our chart. Like it's the wounded healer. So Gemini's naturally, are very into like learning and discovering new, new information, you know, like, or um, they're very interested in like, they're very social. They have confidence. They want to learn new information. So if you have your Chiron in Gemini, it's a challenge. It's going to be a challenge for you to really trust that, you know, and like be able to like learn new information. And, and for you, since it's in your 12th house, the house of like beyond the five senses like you really had to learn to understand and be able to learn new information about like the supernatural because because like, a lot of stuff that you've experienced, you know, has been like, you can't really explain it, you know? So like, that's just, a, that's just a little small example of how you can look at Chiron because Gem like, that's how you look at Chiron or any planet that is meant to challenge you. Saturn is another planet like that. So depending on what Saturn you have, like that is a challenge for you. Like Saturn is meant to challenge you, but if you put in the work similar to Chiron, the wounded healer, you will be able to grow and take the next steps further. So it's, it's really cool. It's really cool. Actually, I was just going to bring that up because I'm looking yeah. at this and I'm like, and I, I'm all about synchronicities because in the paranormal world, synchronicities are a huge thing. Yeah. So I have those three that are the same. and then. Saturn, Uranus, Uranus, whatever you want to call it, yeah. which I know you're trying not to say that, but and Neptune are all Capricorns in the seventh house in retrograde. Yep. Yes. Yeah. That's 
I'm like <laughs> synchronicities blow me away. So I'm like, I'm looking at these yeah. three all in a row, all the exact same. I'm like, <laughs> that's gotta mean something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the seventh house is how we it's not our friends, it's it's how we make friends. So so like your seventh house, like I said, like the first six house are all internal. Your seven to twelve houses affect you external. So your seventh house is how you it's pretty much like how you make friends, how you acquire new information. So for you, like with Capricorns, like Capricorn energy is because Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. So Saturn is all about hard work. You're really going to have to work hard in this avenue. So for you, having Saturn, which is in Capricorn, in your seventh house, you're really going to have to work hard at like making like making friends or like really like really like being able to be open to put yourself out there so that way you can make friends saturn is meant to you know what you got to work in this avenue so i don't know if you're if you resonate with that at all but that's just an example yeah i i never had much luck my whole life making friends because i was either well according to my parents i was too immature but yeah. i always saw, i always saw myself as being too mature because i would hang out with my father all the time at his mechanic shop and hear yeah. things i shouldn't hear so, I mean, I, I mean, that's the, way I, that's the way I always looked at it. But so, I mean, yeah. friends yeah, so, were hard to come by. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like, for you, like, that was a part of your chart where that's something that you're going to have to put in work for. But the thing with Saturn is people when because a lot of people, when they think of Saturn, they're like, oh, this person's the worst. But now, like, once you put in the work, Saturn will reward you. So as you are making new friends, you know, like you get that confidence, you know, like you're, you're building yourself up, you know, and that way you get more comfortable with making more friends and stuff too. So that's how Saturn works. And I think for you, um, it is currently in retrograde in it right now. Um, you might be experiencing your Saturn return right now as we speak. Um, Saturn, cause you know how I mentioned earlier, like Saturn, when it comes back to the sign, that is when you really feel this energy most. And Saturn is in Capricorn right now. So that explains why, like you said, like you saw the R. So it, it is in it is in retrograde right now for you, you know, because it's like because your Saturn is in Capricorn. And right now, I believe Saturn is in Capricorn. But I have to double check and look. But yeah. Yeah, which I mean, it's funny because there's only besides. Uh, OK, I take it back. There's. Well, we we discussed my moon, but besides that, there's only two things that are on the light side, on the sun yeah. side, <laughs> and and that's my Venus and my Lilith. Which mm -hmm. I I don't get what Lilith has to do with though, because I know I know the story of Lilith, but I don't know what yeah. it has to do with with astrology. It's, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I I got you, I got you. Yeah. So you know the story with Lilith, which is really cool. So I don't have to explain the story with Lilith, but Lilith. So you know how I mentioned Chiron is the Lil is the wounded healer. Lilith is somebody that <laughs> so like based off whatever story you believe in, you know, like Lilith was like a baby eater, you know, or like a bone eater, you know, the, mo the mother of all monsters is a story I always heard. Yes, that she, yeah. She's the mother of sin because she was Am's first wife and she yep. betrayed him. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty much what Lilith is, if you look at it from like a planet aspect, you, you know how we have all these big planets, you like in your chart, all those planets, you have sun, moon. Jupiter, Saturn, Lilith is somewhere in between like a couple big planets. So Lilith, Lilith never gets seen. Like, like you don't see Lilith in the stars. Like you, Lilith is something that's beyond the shadows. It's like the shadow that's, that's around us. But like, we we're not, we're not always going to feel Lilith's pre presence, but there's going to be moments in our life where we are going to feel Lilith's presence because Lilith is meant to bring us down. It, like Lilith is meant to like push us. But unlike Saturn, we're not going to get rewarded by this because Lilith wants to keep us down. But if we learn to embrace our Lilith, similar to Saturn and Chiron, we can we can be able to grow and, and all that stuff too. But if you don't put in the work, Lilith is not going to reward you and you're going to continue to go down and down and down because that's what Lilith wants you to do. So, so for you, like, what is your Lilith? Just curiosity. Cause, and oh, my fault before you, you say that Lilith, the reason why they call her the baby eater, depending on like what you believe in, she changes every nine months. And what's a pregnancy cycle every yeah. nine months. So every nine months, Lilith is going through a change in the, in the Zodiac signs. 
Yeah, which my Lilith is Virgo in the third house. Yeah, so the third house involves communication. So it's like short term. It's about routine. Um, you might not have always felt this way, but Lilith and Virgo, I have to double check, but I know Virgos, like I said, they're ruled by Mercury. So they're very big into the details. And um, have you ever had like any challenges in like your like your day to day life in terms of like your communication with certain people or like your <laughs> short term travel? So like Lilith, you're not always going to feel Lilith. But Lilith will take will will take her time to be shown in that aspect. So you have it in your third house. So well, let um, me put it this way: if you ask my wife, she made something to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next time you gotta tell her like, "Hey, it's my Lilith. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My Lilith is acting up right now." It's because because Lilith, unlike the other planets, you don't really feel Lilith a lot because she's in the shadows, you know. So like for me, for instance, mine's in Libra and mine's in my 11th house. So like when it comes, your 11th house involves like sense of community, like being around people that you trust. So like for me, there's definitely been, it's not, I've not always felt this way, but I felt out of place in my community a couple times throughout my life. I'll be chilling with family and in the next, like one day we have a great day. And then the next day I'm like, ah, I don't really fit in. So it's like, that's how Lilith presents herself. Like it's, it's beyond the shadows. Like you're not always going to feel her, but every once in a while you will. And when you do, she is really meant to bring you down. She wants to eat your bones and she wants to like put, put you down and stop you from your growth, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Which the other, the other one I was mentioning that's in the, the only other one, the sun side of things, is Venus, which that's mm-hmm. in the first house, which it's the like the it's the lowest number I have, obviously, but it's the only one that's close to that even. Besides yeah. Little. yeah, yeah. So just to share, so your first house, like I said, it's like the sense of self. So like when you're born, this is your first house. And so your Venus is in Cancer. So here's another little quick tip. So you know how I mentioned Mercury, it's one sign to the right or left or the same sign. For Venus, it's two signs to the left or right or the middle. So you can find someone's Venus. So, it, so if you ever meet an astrologer and he and he, or whoever they predict, they predict like, oh, your Venus is this. This is how they predict it. So for you, you're you're a Gemini, right? So your Venus can yep. be either the following: it can either be Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, or Leo. So it can only be those five. Because Venus, similar to Mercury, wants to stay close to the sun sign. Venus is meant to help you. Venus is a benefic planet. Um, So Venus, like I said, it's ruled by Taurus and Libra. So Tauruses and Libras are very big into the senses, you know, like material things. But they love like nice scents. They love harmony. They love beautiful things. Like if you ever met a Taurus or a Libra, they love, for me, because I'm a Taurus, I have a huge candle collection. I have my, my, my apartment smells nice and fresh all the time because I love, that's like my little, like, that's like my little thing. Like after a long day, I'll light up, I'll light a candle and I just love the smell of it. So that's just, that's just an example of how Venus operates. Venus is a chill energy. Like we're, you're meant to chill here. Like we're Venus because Venus she just naturally attracted people by her calmness, like yeah. her calmness, her like chill attitude. People just gravitated towards that. Now, unlike Venus, the next planet that's believed that's been beneath Venus is Mars. Yeah. Mars is ruled by Aries and Mars. Is, war. Yeah. Yeah. Mars is all about physical action. So you have this chill Venus and then you have this intense Mars where it's like, we're, we're going to, we're going to, physical act we're we're gonna assert ourselves here we're gonna do 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 that's all what mars does in our chart so if you ever met an aries these people <laughs> aries are cool but like it it, it could be a very intense like energy to be around because they're ruled by mars so yeah that's just a share. which actually I, I didn't even see this till now but my venus is in retrograde too if that makes a difference Yeah. So like Venus in retrograde, I know like you might have some challenges in your relationship currently because Venus is the planet of of relationships as well. Love language, relationships, harmony. That's what Venus rules. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Which it's funny you said, though, because Mars, 
it's the complete opposite of Venus on mine. Yep. It's it's Pisces in the ninth house. <laughs> yeah, so your ninth house, that's the that's the house of spirituality, um, religion. Um, that makes sense, actually. Yeah, so for you, yours is in Pisces. So Pisces are very dreamy, imaginative. Like Pisces energy have a really good sense of to intuition, creativity. They're very good at the arts or like, because creativity can be shown in so many different ways. When people think of creativity, they immediately think of art, but solving problems is a form of creativity. Creating podcasts is a form of creativity. Yep. Meeting, like being able to talk about some like spirituality that involves creativity. So yeah, so you have your Pisces in the ninth house. That makes sense as to why you're into a lot of like spirituality and stuff. It's really cool. <laughs> yeah, and I was going to make sense though that it's Mars because I fought with religion for a long time trying to deny any connection to it at all like yep. for, for all my teens and 20s for the most part but <laughs> yep and then just continuing to go down the list so now that we're past mars you know and jupiter is like the frat bro of the planet so jupiter whatever you have jupiter in it's meant to boost you and hype you up so like Jup jupiter's like man depending on where i am in your chart i'm going to hype you up in this area i'm going to boost your confidence you you're you're just going to do this but the thing is, if you have too much Jupiter, you have no grounding, you know, like if you're pretty much just all hype, man, like you need to have something to calm you down, you know? So, cause I know some people that have Sag, cause Sagittarius rules Jupiter. That's why Sagittarius's are so optimistic because Jupiter is the planet of, um, Jupiter is the planet of good luck, good fortune, um, really boosting your confidence. It's, it's, it's a, Jupiter and Venus are the benefic planets. So benefic planets are meant to help you. Venus does it in a chill way. Jupiter does it in a hype way. Saturn and Mars are malefic. They're meant to challenge you. Mars does it by physical action and aggression. Saturn does it by throwing you with a bunch of hard work that you have to overcome. <laughs> so that's how, yeah. So those planets are all, so Jupiter is like the frat bro. So where is Jupiter in your chart? Uh, Taurus 11th house. Yeah. So the 11th house involves like your sense of community, feeling like you fit in with your community and yours is in Taurus. So Tauruses are very, very good in their like, like their senses, like Taurus energy. It's a very grounded and calmness in them. So for you, like being like the really cool, chill, calm friend, that's something that's like naturally for you, you know, like you tend to when you do have your friends, you know, like you really like they fit in well, you know, like have you ever like do you like feel that a little bit, too? Because that's how Jupiter works. Jupiter is like is, is meant to hype you up in this area. Yeah, I mean, I'm always the chill friend who just wants to or at least who used to want to just get stoned and watch a movie or something. So. <laughs> no, I got you. But yeah, that's how Jupiter works for you, man. It's like, yeah, I don't have beef with my friends because like what like what are we doing? You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean. I, yeah, especially in my younger days, I was just, they're all like, oh, let's go to a bar. I'm like, let's just go get a 12 pack and smoke some bowls and watch Austin Powers or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, that's funny. But yeah, like, and like I already told you, the next three, Saturn through Neptune, are all yeah. Capricorn in seventh house and retrograde, which does that happen that like all three planets in a row can have the same everything? Yeah, it, it, it does happen from time to time because each planet, goes through different orbits so like from sat so from jupiter on it takes forever to go through the sign so oh yeah yeah so like i know i forget how much jupiter is but i know saturn is every two years um uranus is every eight years um and neptune i forget what neptune is but i think neptune's even longer oh yeah, um, it, yeah. it has to be just scientifically but yeah yeah scientifically yeah it is but yeah so for you like to have all three in the same sign like i mean some like for instance for me I, I I definitely had a couple in uh I forget what house it was but for you it's all you just gotta look at all the planets and where they are in your in the house number because that tells you where it is and and which we said like that seventh house which involves like putting yourself out there to like meet new people meet new like meet new things you know like make new friends that's something that you have to work on um, for your chart and the more work you put in though the more you're going to be rewarded because you have your Jupiter in the 11th house. So like once you make friends, like you don't have a, you don't have beef, you know, like you're, cause some people make friends and then 
they don't last, you know, so, like, yeah. so for you, like once you make friends, your friends mean a lot to you. They're going to last, you know? So, yeah. So that's the challenge for you is just to like put yourself out there, make those friends, you know, make those connections. And there you go. <laughs> so, which makes sense. Cause I've always been one of those people who makes friends. And then I usually will have those friends for like a decade or so at least, yep. but until life gets in the way, but yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> and yeah. And, and, um, Neptune is so Uranus. I, I described a little bit earlier. So Uranus is the planet of like freedom. So like we feel Uranus as a collective because it stays in orbit. It stays in a sign every eight years. So pretty much like sometimes it might be like as a new presidential term, Uranus changes. Wouldn't that be weird? <laughs> like I, I, I bet you if I looked it up, there might have been something where like that happened. But that's just an example. Like, um. But um, but yeah, Uranus okay. is all about freedom. It's ruled by Aquarius. So Aquarius is like humanitarian work is in Uranus. So like Uranus is a very exterior planet. Um, Neptune is the planet of like spirituality, dreams. Um, trying to think what else. It's stuff that's beyond the five senses. Um, and Pisces rules Neptune. So if, yeah, so that's just an example. Because Pisces, like I described to you, is all about like the dream and um, stuff that's beyond imagination, stuff that's beyond the five senses. So that's what Neptune is too. So I know for yours, yours is in Capricorn. So like to look at your sign, Capricorn, like I said, ruled by Saturn. So Capricorn's all about putting in work, dedication. So the more work you put in, in these avenues, like you will be rewarded towards the end. But Uranus and uh, Neptune, they change takes for a while for them to change but right now neptune is in retrograde and just to share you know how neptune is the planet of like dreams and false reality yeah. like you know like all the stuff's beyond the five senses when neptune is in retrograde everyone is going to experience some like false realities because or, or like have you ever like had certain beliefs about certain things like this is like a wake-up period for everybody um, it started in retrograde in June and it's going to stay in retrograde, I think, until like December. But this is a moment where it's like if you ever had like false beliefs about certain things or like because uh, we all have depending on we all have like illusions, like because we all dream. We're human beings. We all have dreams in some shape or form. And sometimes we might dream too much where it's like are we actually like taking the physical action to achieve our dreams or are we just continuing to dream and stay out of, so like when Neptune's in retrograde, it's a great time for us to, it's a reality check. Like, am I in the right path? Am I doing the right things that I'm doing right now? You know? And because what's going to happen is if you don't, you're going to continue to go, you know, like we got to be able to put ourselves in the right track, you know? So yeah. Yeah. So that's Neptune. So Neptune, Uranus, we typically feel those planets as a collective because they, they take forever to change. Um, but yeah, but me and yeah. you, yeah, me and you probably don't have the same one. I know my, I got to check my Uranus. I think mine's an Aquarius. Um, so like similar Capricorn, it's about hard work, you know, but in Aquarius, Aquarius is all about hard work, but it's more like a, an aloof energy. Like Aquarius is all about humanitarian work. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. And actually, I mean, going back to what you said about, Uranus changing every eight years, like the presidents. There's a joke there about an asshole changing every eight years, but <laughs> com <laughs> com completely. I didn't want to take away from the seriousness when you're in the middle of it. But no, 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 you're good. No, no, no. I, I, again, like I, this stuff. Uh, it's it's crazy to see how all the stuff and all the stuff plays in. And um, I, I'm a jokester too, man. I, <laughs> it's really cool. Like it, they probably created that because of that. Who knows? <laughs> so who knows? I mean, I, I would think these things have been around since before presidents of America were around. But, oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, especially yeah, since man. all this is named after ancient mythology, basically. Yeah, pretty so, much. Yeah. So Pluto, which how much does Pluto affect our life? I know I, I think you said earlier it's a pretty big effect on us, right? Because it takes so long to come around. Yeah, yeah. So Pluto was all about the planet of like rebirth, transformation. So Scorpio rules Pluto. Um, so for me, the share, like I'm, this, the only way how I can explain Pluto, Pluto is through my own chart. So for me, I have my Pluto in my first house. So the first house is sense of self, physical action, right? Or like, like your physical body. 
So if you have Pluto in your first house, you're constantly in a state of like rebirth and change. Uh, me and my friends have this inner joke with myself. Like I, th- I do things for like a couple years and then I immediately start over and try something new. I've learned to change that obviously, but throughout my lifetime, like I graduated, well, before I graduated high school, I completely transformed and changed how I operated. And then I did it again after a couple of years in college. So that's how Pluto takes effect in us. It's about transformation, rebirth, starting over, doing it again, growing, taking steps, resetting, do it again. So that's how Pluto affects us. Um, So depending on where Pluto is in your chart. So for me, it's in my first house. So, so the first house, like I said, it's like the mask that we present to people. So like, so imagine having Pluto in your first house. So like, People do not really get a good energy or like not a good energy, but like they don't really I can be viewed to some people as a complicated personality based off of how I pre- present myself because of Pluto, because uh, because for those that just met me, like it depends on when you meet me. Like if you meet me a couple months from now, like I, I mentioned in our podcast, how I'm going to start adding um, astrology readings for like just like a side hustle I'm going to do. Like if you were to tell me a couple months ago, I'm like, oh, yeah, I did that. And then it's, it's just like a, I'm constantly trying to do new things, which can make things complicated, if you get what I'm saying. Oh, 100 percent. I mean, I've met people like that who it seems like <laughs> it seems like every couple months they have a new career path. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Pluto might be in there in their first house or whatever or an important house. So, well, Pluto is with Scorpio in my fifth house in retrograde. Yeah. So for you, the fifth house involves creativity. Um, the fifth house is creativity, imagination. So it's like uh, the, the fifth house and the, I forget the other house that I mentioned, they go hand in hand together. It's the fifth house, and I believe in the 11th, but don't quote me exactly on that. But so for you, like when it comes to your creativity, um, have you had moments where like you, have you ever felt like you're changing your creative aspect a little bit? Like, have you tried multiple podcasts before? Like, is this your first podcast or like, have this is tried? my se- this is my second podcast. That, well, this is my first podcast I started on my own. Okay, I I was on another podcast. I'm on another podcast that a friend of mine start a now a now friend of mine started before th- this one. But I also have a second podcast I started, and I'm on a fourth one as well that someone else started. Okay, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, so like when it comes to your creative avenue, like it's just like you might go through some phases where like you go through a rebirth, a change, and then starting over, rebirth, change, starting over. Um, that's how Pluto affects us. So in house five, yeah. And 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 I also want to add though that like as we talked about your chart, and I appreciate you being so open. Like this has been really cool. Um, if you know your exact birth time, some of those house numbers might change. So like some things yeah. you might feel more, some things you might not feel more. So just to just to throw yeah. that out there. Yeah, I mean we've been it's been pretty spot on so far. So <laughs> I, I I think I got the time pretty damn close. So I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. I guess so, <laughs> but yeah. But because I mean, and Scorpio and Pluto does that like sync usually, or is that like? Oh, oh that? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so if you have a sign where in a in a planet where it feels com- uh, like comfortable in, I forget what it's called. I should know this. Uh, oh man, what is it called? Detriment. No, no. Detriment is the opposite. Um, but. If you Google it, you'll know the term, but it, it it's it means like it, it feels good. It feels comfortable in this in this planet. So for you, if you have Scorpio and Pluto, despite it being in your fifth house, you might feel comfortable with the change and the rebirth. Like you, you're going to feel more comfortable there. So like, let for instance, let's say you had cancer in the moon, like for it oh, to share. Actually, I'll, I'll share. So my moon is in Capricorn. So cancer is the ruler of the moon, right? So if you have a moon in cancer, when it comes to emotions, you understand emotions very well. If you have it in Capricorn, you do not understand emotions well. So it's in the uh, detriment position. So how to find if something's in detriment versus like chill, you look at the sign that it's ruled under and it's the sister sign of that. So for instance, for the sun, Leo, right? The sister sign of Leo is Aquarius. So if your sun sign is Aquarius, that it can be a challenge for you to express your ego and identity. That's just an example. For the moon, it's Cancer and Capricorn. 
So like for me, I've always had problems with expressing my emotions. I've had to really learn how to process my emotions and be able to communicate them effectively. That's been a challenge in my whole life. It's been like that with friends, family. I can know somebody for like 10, 15 years. We can have drinks every once a week. I would still have moments where I struggle with communicating my emotions in an effective way. But that's just an example. Um, for Mercury, so for you, your Gemini's in Mercury, that's a good spot. Having Gemini in Mercury is a, is a, is a, you're not going to feel that many challenges with communication. Like you might have certain challenges depending on who you communicate with, but the way how you communicate, it's you you get to the, you know what I mean? You, you get to the point. <laughs> so. women, women, my whole life, women, I couldn't communicate <laughs> to them for shit. So, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yet I just got promoted to a manager in my company because I, and one of the things he reasons he gave me the job is because I communicate so well. Yeah. So, so. Yeah, so yeah, so that's an example. Yeah. So if so for Mercury, if you have Mercury in Gemini, so if you had Mercury in Sagittarius, that would be detriment position. So if you have a Sag Mercury, you might have challenges with the way how you communicate. Um, and if you ever met a Sagittarius Mercury, they're very blunt. And sometimes if you're too blunt with people, they might take it the wrong way. Um, I have some friends that have Sag Mercury's that can testify, but that's just an example. Um, for Venus, it's Taurus and Libra. So um, the detriment would be Aries and Scorpio. And to share, my Aries is in Venus. <laughs> so just to share a little bit. So like if you have an Aries Venus, like we, we described a little bit, Aries is ruled by Mars, right? So Mars is the planet of physical action, assertiveness. So if you have Aries in your Venus, your love language, you're going to fall in love hard. You're like, you need to have a constant like flare or fire because that's the Aries energy. You know, it's about, about physical action. And so like for me and my relationships in my past, I'm good now, but I've had to really learn this. Like relationships are meant to be like chill, you know, like every once in a while, it's good to go out and try new things, but you got to have a good balance. And that's yeah. something that I struggled with learning. Uh, because for me, like I would meet these people and I'm like, all right, like, let's go, like, let's do this, let's do that, let's do that. And it can be very intimidating, <laughs> you know, like, it's like, dang, dude, like, chill out, <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> so yeah, that's just an example of like detriments and placements that feel good. So for instance, for Mars, you have air. So if you have a Libra Mars, that can be a challenge for you um, in terms of like being like assertive, like holding confrontations. Um, and all that stuff too. So that's just an example. So right. each planet has, yeah, each, uh, yeah, each planet has a detriment and a spot where it feels chill and, and vibes. So, yeah. Which it's cool though. The only thing I see that I don't, we haven't talked about, and I don't know what the hell it means even is what is node. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's one. So your lunar nodes. So this one's another part. Oh. So, okay. <laughs> yeah yeah so pretty much so you have a north node and a south node um your north node is what you're supposed to learn in this lifetime or like how like because we all feel energy how are we supposed to take our energy and use it in this lifetime our south node is mistakes that our past lives have made with taking the energy so our north node is what we're supposed to learn in terms of like feeling the energy and manifesting the energy in a good way for us and our, that our south node did not do a good job in. So your north node, depending on what your north node is, the south node is the sister sign. So let's say you have, so for me, I have a Virgo north node. My south node would be in Pisces. So if you have an earth sign north node, uh, your sister sign is going to be water sign, depending on what it is. If you have a fire, it's air. If you have an air, it's fire. If you have a water, it's earth. That's how you find the, the sister signs of everything. That that's funny because mine's the exact opposite of yours then. Oh, so yours is in Pisces. Yeah. Yeah. So for you, did you grow up with a lot of like boundaries and certain structures when you were oh, little? God, oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, same structures everybody in the 90s did. Be be home before the streetlights go on, like that type of thing. But yeah, not like I didn't have like the strictest of parents, though, that would like beat me if I didn't do shit right. But. <laughs> I had friends like that, but yeah, I mean. <laughs> yeah, because like 
um, Virgo energy, it's very focused in on like details and like, like teaching and all that stuff too. So for you, for you, you have your North node in Pisces, Pisces, you're, you're meant to like get creative, you know, like, like feel your emotions, you know, like really be able to like learn emotions, express them and create stuff. That's what Pisces do. You know, like they're very, they're emotional, but they're very intuitive and they love to create stuff. So in the past life, you had Virgo or you, like in the past life, it was standard, standard, standard. You have to follow these specific procedures in order to do this, this specific way for you. You're meant to learn like there's so many ways, like just live. You know what I mean? Like That's pretty much in a in a short sense, like just live and create, have fun. Um, so for me, it's the opposite. So me, I'm supposed to learn like. Because in the past life, I've been taken advantage of because Pisces energy, they're very gullible. So like with that gullibleness, like you can get taken advantage of. So like in past lifetimes, I've been taken advantage of, like I've tried to be creative, but people have like taken that the wrong way. So what I'm supposed to learn in this lifetime is I, I'm supposed to learn structure and order with the stuff that I'm learning and teach that to other people. So that's an example of how the lunar nodes operate. So for psychology stuff, because I eventually, because I have a couple more years left in grad school, I want to combine. So there's the parts that I'm really going to look at in our chart for like spiritual work, your 12th house, because obviously like that's everything in the supernatural, obviously. Um, then you, um, the lunar nodes, Chiron, Lilith, your moon sign, and Venus and stuff, depending on like your relationships and stuff like that. But those are all the things that I'm going to look at. And these are all things that if you're just learning, like that's what you should look at as well. And if you're curious to learn more, just, just Google like, okay, North node in Pisces, what does this mean? You know? And then you just look, because that's all I did. I stayed up till I stayed up till <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. The first night I stayed up till like four in the morning, just reading, just like absorbing all this information. And then, yeah. It's cool. It's it's another way to understand ourselves, you know, and so much more than just, oh, your son, this, so you're supposed to operate this. Like, no, like there's so much stuff in our chart, man, that that explains so much. Um, there's there's one more thing that I forgot to mention. So I know we talked about all the planets and stuff, and I know it's been a lot, a lot of information to absorb. Before you but, get there, real fast though. Oh, I got just because just because I love synchronicity. <laughs> Just to see if we're this similar, what house is your node in? Yeah, so my north node is in, let's see, my 10th house. Ninth. Retrograde. Awesome, we're close, yeah. Yeah, no, mine's no, in no. retrograde too. <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty damn close, which I believe you said the ninth house is creativity yeah. uh, or fr community, I want to say. Uh, no, so, so the ninth house involves religion, spiritual. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Philosophy as well. Higher learning education. So it's like stuff that really like, yeah. So for you, you have a couple placements there in your ninth house. You have um your Jupiter and you have right now, not your Jupiter. Mars. Mars. That's what it is. You have your Mars and your lunar nodes in your ninth house. So you're meant to take physical action in your the house of spirituality and like philosophy, higher ed learn, higher ended learning. So this podcast, yeah, you mentioned before, like this podcast has been really great for you. Keep doing it. You know, I, I, I don't plan on stopping. I'm making <laughs> progress. No, I don't plan yeah. on stopping, but <laughs> that's just an example though. Like, yeah. So for me, uh, just to share the 10th house is about like, um, the 10th house is about like career, like life purpose. Um, yeah. So the 10th house is pretty intense. So the, the, the second house and the 10th house usually trying together like they're in harmony together so like if you look at the houses it's a you look at the best way to visualize it is the circle that it has um so house one and i believe 12 house one six and 12 i forget yeah one six and 12 they form a triangle um house two and ten i i just i don't know at the top of my head but like if you look if you visualize it you can see how the houses you can look at them and they they all, they all build off of each other. Certain houses build off of each other, but the second house and the 10th house build off of each other. That's what I'm trying to say. But yeah. Yeah. I, I get what you're saying, which 
So yeah, I just I wanted to see that because like synch- synch- I love synchronicity and like I, yeah. I had a, I had a feeling we'd be close if not the same house for that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're close. Um, to share for me in my ninth house, uh, my ninth house is is ruled by Leo, um, because I don't have anything in my ninth house. So if you don't have anything in a house, don't get discouraged or worried. You just look at what sign is ruled the house is ruled by the house, and then you look at like what planet. Like so, for instance, like. My ninth house is Leo, right? What it, what is Leo ruled under? Leo is ruled under the sun. So like when it comes to like my philosophy, higher end learning, like my ego and my son, I need to put an effort there. If you get what I'm saying, that's just an example. Yeah. Um, Cause like some people, depending on who you talk to, some people are like empty houses are, Oh no, no, no. Like, no, like each house has a purpose. If you don't have, cause we all don't have planets in every single house. So in the empty houses, just look at what sign it's ruled under. And then you look at, okay, so if you, let's say you had 10th house. All right. So Saturn rules my 10th house. Let me look at my Saturn and see how that affects me, you know? So that's just an example. If you have an empty house, what to do, but yeah. All right. So, which, I mean, we just went through my whole freaking astrological chart so. <laughs> and yours as well, basically at the same time. Well, yeah. so, uh, so Of it, course. Yeah. And so it worked. It worked. <laughs> but and my first ever astrolo- astro- astrological reading so yeah. kind of and it all lined up which is the freaky part because it really does line up yeah so, i know it's crazy <laughs> and it wasn't even like i had to think about it like as soon as i heard you say it, i was just like yeah that makes sense <laughs> but <laughs> so before we before we end for today just what is some advice you'd give to people in general for self-care like what's the best advice you can give people yeah. So, so my best advice to give people is to go and try it. Like self-care is a form. Uh, it's going to be a journey. It's going to be an, a, a roller coaster, you know, and it's like, you're not going to know what works for you unless like you take the time and try it. Like, I didn't know for me that journaling would work so well. It just took me one day. I'm just like, you know what? Like I need to figure out something that's going to help me here. Cause I, I have a difficult time like expressing and communicating my emotions. So when I started writing them down, it was like a light switch just flipped. And now that's what I do every month. Like I, I said earlier, like every new moon, I'm manifesting new goals or what I want to do this month. Um, so my best advice for anybody when it comes to self care is just to go out, try it and really, really just put yourself out there when it comes to self care, because we, we all, we're all human beings. We all have different perspectives on things and what something works, something that works for your friend is not going to work for you and vice versa, you know? So it's like, find that form of self-care for you. And, and it, it looks different for everybody. And once you do that, like you're able to grow and cause we're all human beings at the end of the day. And we need to, to learn to put ourselves first sometimes because especially with life and family work, like we really have to take some time, whether that's five minutes, 10 minutes to just find that self-care journal, write, meditate for 10 minutes, find a therapist, whatever, you know, like there's so many resources that we need to be more aware of. So that's my advice. Just really, you got it. The only way you're going to learn is just by doing it and putting yourself out there to try it. So, yeah. Good advice. I think good advice. I mean, I've heard it before. I just never followed it, but <laughs> that was my younger days. So, <laughs> well, yeah, but that's how we learn, though. Like, I mean, yep. still with myself, just I still make some mistakes that that I wish I didn't make. But that's how we learn, you know. It's like we're human beings. We're meant to make mistakes. If we'd never made a mistake, we would never. We would just be just, eh, like, <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. Life be a straight, life be a straight line. It'd be boring as hell. But yeah, so. Where can people find you and your podcast if they want to get in touch or see what you're all about? Yeah, so I have a bunch of social media. I have a link tree. You guys can check that and find that. But you just search your spiritual best friend. And um, yeah, I'm on Spotify for my podcast. I'm on um, Apple Podcast as well. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter as well. But Twitter, I just tweet about sports. <laughs> but but yeah, so like that's where you guys can check out all my work and stuff and Thank you, Jeremy, for for letting me come on this podcast and just talk about astrology and stuff. But but yeah, like my podcast, it focuses on mental health and astrology as well. We don't really get in depth like what we did here, but um, it we we talk about certain parts of the chart and stuff too, and can and relate it to how 
it affects them a little bit. But that's where you guys can check out all my work. Just search your spiritual best friend and click on a link, and there we go. <laughs> so it's funny because I have a I have a friend from my other podcast, uh, the first one I got on that has a mental health podcast as well. Uh, Harvey the Gare, he has a podcast called Men of the Prize. Oh wow, that's cool. I'll give that and, a listen. I mean, yeah, and if you hit him up because he's always looking for people beyond it as well. So, and he, I mean, he, he's another awesome guy to talk to. And I, I've been on his podcast because actually most of us have from their podcast, but it's just a good show. I mean, it, it, it's all about like men being able to show their emotions because we were, we were taught for so long that men don't cry. Men just rub dirt on it and walk away. But I mean, so it's a little, eye-opening at least because i've listened to every episode of it and i love it like just hearing different men's stories is a great thing and, so. and yeah and, and that's so important jeremy again like because like we need as men like we're taught so long for generations you know to we're supposed to behave this specific way that like we're realizing now like like that's not okay like you're starting to see the problems of it you know like pete like there's so much stress and anxiety that men experience and we got to be able to learn to communicate that so I'll definitely give that podcast a listen. Thank you, Jeremy, for recommending recommending me that podcast. Oh, a hundred percent. And I probably actually will throw your Facebook profile to Harvey and be like, "Got another guest for you," because I throw in people all the time that I find that I talk to or that I find. So we've, <laughs> we, we we've had a couple of our guests cross over, but of course, of course. <laughs> so for all my listeners, you know, you can find me on Paranormal the New Normal Facebook group where I have everything I do on one page. So. And it's mainly about this show, but it's about all the other three shows as well. And you can find me on Twitter and the gram as Juggalo Bastard. So thank you for coming on, Josh. I really appreciate it, which it's funny because that's actually my brother's name. But <laughs> so that, uh, synchronicities, I love it. But thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. And who knows? Maybe we'll have you back someday to talk about astrology a little bit more. Of course. Thank you, Jeremy, for the opportunity. Not a problem. And we'll see our li my listeners next 